Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. In today's headlines, Ethiopia declares countrywide state of emergency, Palestinians in Sheikh Jarrah reject agreement with settlers, Columbia University student workers go on strike, and Iran claims it thwarted United States' attempt to steal oil from its ship. In our first story, the Ethiopian federal government has imposed a countrywide state of emergency for six months. The measure was announced on November 2nd to then be approved by the House of Representatives in 48 hours. Over the weekend, the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, or the TPLF, claimed to have captured the towns of Desi and Kombolcha. The federal government denied the capture. However, it stated that the TPLF forces had executed over 100 people in Kombolcha. While the government declared a unilateral ceasefire in June, the TPLF expanded its advances into the Amhara and Afar region. Over 700,000 people have been displaced and hundreds have been killed in massacres. Meanwhile, a joint report on rights abuses within the Tigray region itself was released on November 3rd. The investigation was conducted by the United Nations and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. It covers the period starting with the TPLF's attack on a military base on November 3rd last year till the government's declaration of a ceasefire on 28th of June 2021. As such, it does not include the TPLF's attack in other regions since then. The report states that all parties to the conflict have committed rights violations which may amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity. The findings were based on 269 interviews with witnesses and victims and over 60 meetings with NGOs, government officials and other sources. The report documents extrajudicial executions, torture and forced disappearances of civilians. In terms of access to humanitarian aid, the report stated that there were delays. However, it found no confirmation of a deliberate denial of aid to Tigray or the use of starvation as a weapon of war. The government repeatedly faced these accusations despite reports of the TPLF seizing aid trucks. In our next story, Palestinians facing forced expulsion from Sheikh Jarrah have refused a so-called compromise offered by the Israeli Supreme Court. The Jauni, Iskafi, Al-Kurd and Al-Qadi families had filed a petition in the court against their displacement. In October, the judges proposed to issue a protected status to the families. Three families would be recognized as first-generation protected tenants. They would hold this status for two more generations. The fourth family would only be granted the status for one more generation. The families would also have to pay 2,400 shekels in yearly rent to the settlers. Nahalat Shimon would still be recognized as the legal owner of the land. Moreover, it would be able to apply for building permits or take steps to evict families 15 years after the agreement had been signed or the legal process had been completed. The Sheikh Jarrah families would also have to pay court and legal fees amounting to 30,000 shekels. The families had previously rejected a similar deal in August. The court set November 2nd as a deadline for both sides to respond to the proposal. The Palestinian families unanimously rejected the deal. A statement from the families read that they were being forced to choose between their own dispossession or submitting to an oppressive agreement. Activist Muna Al-Kurd stated on Tuesday that their refusal came from their faith in the justice of their case and their rights to their homes and homeland. In our next story, we go to the United States where student workers at Columbia University have gone on strike. Over 3,000 graduate and undergraduate students have been fighting for a fair contract for years. Organized by the Student Workers of Columbia United Auto Workers Union, they walked out on November the 3rd. Ahead of the fall semester, Columbia unilaterally changes the stipend structure for graduate students. Students 
previously received a lump sum amount of $10,600 to cover moving, childcare, and other costs. The university slashed this to $2,600. A strike was authorized by a margin of 88.5% votes at the end of September. The union argues that Columbia already pays its graduate workers $5,500 to $18,000 below an annual living wage in New York City. Workers are demanding a living wage, including a payroll compensation of $45,000 for 12-month appointments. They have also demanded yearly increase of 3% and a $26 wage with a $1.5 annual increase for hourly workers. Other demands include neutral arbitration in cases of harassment and discrimination and comprehensive childcare. They have also demanded a $300,000 union-controlled health care fund. Law enforcement agencies like ICE and local police must also be kept off campus. The strike at Columbia follows just days after graduate students at Harvard University walked out for three days. In our final story, Iran reported on November the 3rd that it had thwarted an attempt by the United States forces to steal oil from its ship. The Tasneem news agency stated that the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps landed on a tanker in the Sea of Oman. The ship had been confiscated by the United States Navy. It, it was reportedly trying to transfer oil to another tanker headed towards an unknown location. Iran's state TV also claimed that U.S. forces tried to stop the Iranian ship from entering their territorial waters. The U.S. has stolen Iranian oil several times in complete violation of international law. It also threatened to confiscate ships carrying oil to Venezuela in 2020. The U.S. often cites the unilateral sanctions imposed during the Trump administration. These prevent the sale of Iranian oil in the international market. Meanwhile, it was reported in May that the United States had sold 2 million barrels of stolen Iranian oil. Iran has also accused Israel, which is a close U.S. ally, of attacking its ships in the Persian Gulf region. That's all for today's episode. For more details and stories, visit us at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.